Welcome to a new episode of Risky Concepts RC Build Channel. Today I'm going over a CC01 build that I did for a customer. Now the customer assembled the truck uh, in a two-wheel drive. You can see it started out as a Volkswagen. It's not a Volkswagen anymore. Oh, excuse me. A little bit of heartburn from my tacos for lunch. Anyway, that's what she is now. So that's a Parma SUV body. It's a 110 scale Chevy Tahoe or Blazer body. The wheels are, I think, Thunder Tech or something. I think Thunder Tech. Basically, they're a 3 inch rim, 17 millimeter hex. So, if this is 110 scale, those would be 30s, which would kind of make this a dunk. So, we've got full working LED set in here. You've got turn signals. High beams. Now I know they're reversed, but this is per the customer's request. Brake lights and reverse lights. Now I literally just peeled the mask off. So there's not a single decal on here. Everything you see is paint. Now the customer's windows are 100%, uh, 80%, or 90%, 80%. So this was all done to replicate their actual vehicle. Now I won't be driving the truck. <clears throat> I let customers have the privilege of their first drive. I also don't like taking a chance at mucking the vehicle up. I have run it around my living room at about two miles, or my kitchen at about two miles an hour to verify that everything functions. The one thing I can say is the wheels do rub on the inside on the shocks at full steer. So this is not a full function. Uh, basically you'd have to change the shocks to be able to get full steering radius. It is again, like I said, it's a two-wheel drive, so this is intended to just be an on-road, kind of a drive around at the car shows type vehicle. But that being said, it's brushless. I've got it disconnected so I could run the throttle without the truck taking off to show the lights and the brakes and stuff. The high-tech servo for steering. So she's definitely upgraded over factory, but not going to be able to take full advantage of that 12 turn motor just being as though it's not going to have really any shock travel. And I made the shocks as stiff as I could because I don't want to have to cut out too much of this wheel well because it'll just kind of ghetto up the body. So I'm trying to keep it as full wheel well as I can. You can see the LED buckets. You can just barely make out a little dot of light there that I can't see without the camera. So let's see, that would be a turn signal light. You can see another one. Now I can see that one without the camera. But I go to an extra effort with Shugu to do all this, to put all the lights and the wires and make it all disappear and then airbrush the wires black and then mount that with some double-sided tape. And then that's Velcro to mount the body with stealth body mounts. Now I handmade these, so you got a uh, quarter inch aluminum rod, drilled and tapped at both ends, and then a, uh, I don't know, I think it's like 3 16 aluminum sheet, drilled and chamfered, so that, or counterboard, or whatever you want to think of it as, so that you can put a uh, tapered head screw in there so it's flush. Put the Velcro on and it sits flush. Yeah, there you go. That's the build. Now, I wish that the entire build took even close to the short a time as it took to describe it. Um, trying to seal all the, the lights and hand make the buckets and not have any issues. The one thing you got to be careful of when using Shugo is if you put on too much, it re-moistens the paint, lifts the paint off the Lexan, and now you've got 
it looks like a bubble in your paint. It looks really bad. You, you basically ruined all the work you've done up to that point. So I had to do this very slowly, very meticulously to not have to junk the whole first portion of the build. But I'll turn it. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of wheel well. But it clears. As far as, when I say not a whole lot of wheel well, I mean as far as a space here between the tire and the rim. There's a couple hairs there, and I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch there. So it's really tight, but again, I don't want to cut out too much. And if the customer requests, I will be more than happy to, but until they kind of give the okay, I don't want to ghetto the body up any more than I have to. Now at a later time, I believe he plans on getting license plates to match his, and possibly uh, aluminum rear axle for this, which will be good because with this much weight, this high elevated, it's definitely going to be a little more tippy than it would have been without these wheels. So there's your, to my, I can flip it around, show you the back. See, I still got some overspray. And there you go. Tamiya CC01 with a blazer body or a Tahoe body. Now I, I hand sand all my edges here so that they're as smooth as humanly possible and you can see that a little bit of the dust got up underneath the edge of the overspray film so I'm going to have to dust the lower portion all the way around before the owner comes and picks it up. Now these were white and they were painted with spaz sticks chrome and then the other thing I had to get other than the 17 millimeter adapter was uh, these are let me think here, 156 ID by 3 quarter OD washers and then I used a gallon and, I, and I'm exaggerating but I used a whole ton of thread locker because I'm not on this nut fully so to try and keep it from falling off I've used a whole as much thread locker as I could get I let it dry I put a little bit more on and then put the wheel on and then put the bolt on the nut so hopefully it should all stay together. Now if I can, I don't know if I can show you this, but we'll try it here. There's just a little bit of visible wheel well between the, there, there I can get it, between the body and the actual wheel well that they show. But to bring it all the way down, I'd have to cut up a lot more wheel well opening. And I don't really want to do that without the customer's consent. So there's... There she is. If you got any comments, questions, feel free to post them below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.